I was babysitting my niece once whilst I was staying at my brother's place and they had a baby camera set up so I could see her on the little TV it came with. I was studying and started to doze off when I heard someone whispering and realised it was coming through the monitor. I thought initially it could be some kind of feedback or something, but when I looked at the TV there was a dark shadow near her crib. I've never been more terrified in my life but that shadow was clearly there and it had not been there before. I ran to a room and had a look around and saw nothing, but I took her the hell out of there. I went back to the TV and the shadow was clearly gone. I told my brother what happened and he pulled me aside and told me not to mention it to my sister-in-law because she'll freak out, but that he'd seen the same thing several times now, with the same whispering. They stayed in that house for about four more years, and when my niece was just learning to talk she would tell her mum, special friend. To this day it scares the shit out of me. When they moved out my brother told me that my niece had become unconsolably sad because she would miss her friend. Her mum would tell her that she could bring him along and all that she would say is that he couldn't leave the house. We've never to this day told her about that damn shadow and she apparently never saw it. I moved into a new house over winter, my first actual house that I owned on my own so I was pretty stoked and we just had our second kid a week before signing. We were so excited to get the house all remodelled for her, walls painted, floors redone, making this house ours. Of course we set up a baby monitor first thing as the children's rooms are on the other side of the house. At first there were no issues baby didn't enjoy the room during the day. She'd stare at the walls as if she didn't like the pale purple paint. We painted them a nice orange that weekend and we also got a cat. That's when things started to get weird. The cat and baby now had no problem with the room in the day, which is good, better than last time, and our daughter was too young to do much other than fuss. But the cat was old enough to be a bit more expressive. All day she'd stare at the southeast corner of the room and at night she'd arch her back and hiss as if threatened. We'd start hearing faint noises like talking over the monitor at night but never loud or clear enough to make out. I'm nothing if not a logical man. That corner had an old dresser that was rescued from an old army hotel when it closed. Perhaps the cat could sense some smells that it didn't like but there was also the entrance to the crawl space under that corner of the outside, so lots of wires entered through there. Both children and small animals are sensitive to electromagnetic radiation, and I went under the house and removed about 100 feet of extraneous wiring from two previous owners of satellite TV. That meant I rewired the whole section of the house to eliminate possible interference and replace old wires with shielded cables. We also just moved the dresser in case. And yet the noises didn't stop. They grew more frequent and the cat refused to go into that room during the day. It would sit awake in the crib all night, body between the baby and the rest of the room, eyes locked to that corner, occasionally growling or hissing. We stopped letting our son have his radio on at night in case we were hearing that. As we met our neighbours, we would ask if they had any small children, but none of them had any baby monitors on them. We installed an alarm system when we took to keeping our favourite rifle loaded by the bed. Occasionally, the alarm would claim our daughter's window would be open, but no alarm would sound and we'd find it secure when we'd check. We ran out of explanations and we began letting our daughter sleep with us so she could get better rest. For lack of a better option, I continued renovation. We finished the bathroom and started on the other rooms, but we didn't do any more to the nursery. Out of morbid curiosity, we left the baby monitor on at night, and the noises still happened. But the room was still being unused. They sounded almost sad, and after a week or so without any use of that room whatsoever, I was lying awake after a long day at work watching an episode of Bones when out of nowhere, clear as day, a woman's voice comes over the monitor and calmly says, Okay, I'm leaving now. And the monitor clicked off. 
We've had no problems since. I was at a friend's house one night and she was putting her little boy to bed. Her baby monitor had a camera built in and she was installing it at the foot of the crib. She also had one of those mattresses with sensors on the crib. Well, we were all down watching a movie and the receiver from the monitor is on the coffee table in front of us. The sound sensors spike and the screen goes white. She picks it up and all you can make out on the screen is an eerie face. We go running to the room and her kid is sound asleep. So we look around and we don't see anything strange and we go back to resume our movie. About 10 minutes later the same thing happens. I get up quietly and sneak into his room while she stays on the couch. I catch the kid standing up in his crib with his face right against the monitor. He's smiling like crazy and giggling. He looks over at me and quickly lays down and acts like he's asleep. I let her know he's up and she laughs it off. A few nights later she tells me the same thing happened to the monitor but her boy was sitting on the couch next to her at the time. Okay, so my daughter is now almost two and has since moved into her own room. We have one of those video monitor things where you can see and hear the baby on the little TV thing or you can just turn the picture off and get sound. So one night, maybe a month ago, I'm sitting in bed scrolling through Reddit or something and I start hearing my daughter babbling to herself. Now it's really late, like one or two in the morning. Much later than she should ever be awake, unless something is wrong or she's sick, or cutting a tooth or something. So I turn the picture on the monitor and see her standing up in her crib, facing sort of diagonally away from the camera. I can see her hands in front of her, but only like half her face. Now would be a good time to mention that we've been teaching her American Sign Language since she was about 3 months old, and she's been responding and conversing in signs since about 10 months. I can see her signing things like, nice and silly and fun, and oddly enough, no, don't like and bear. Of course, being the good and loving mother that I am, and really not wanting to deal with an overly sleepy baby in the morning, I get up and see what the heck she's doing. When I get to her room, she's still standing and signing slash babbling towards herself in the far corner. I ask her what she's doing and who she's talking to, and she says, as best she can, friend, which she does with her whole hand and not just her index finger, and then signs, bear again. I tell her that no, see bear, who is actually one of her stuffed toys, is in the bed behind her and not the corner of the room. But she just signs to herself and says, silly mummy. I can see she's wide awake and I sit down in the rocker next to her bed and try and figure out what woke her. But all that she tells me is friend, bear, and occasionally ducks down like she's hiding and making shh noises. I finally get fed up and ask her who friend bear is and her response literally gave me chills because she does not speak well yet and she managed to say very clearly with the most serious face that a 20 month year old can pull. No name, no name, shh. Well now I am very truly freaked out and I tell her no name friend bear to go home because it's too late to play and I did what any good mother would do. I gave her a pacifier, I went back to my room, turned off the monitor entirely and hid under the covers of my room where my good loving husband will protect me from the invisible nameless bears. I used to babysit two small kids, three and six at the time and I would occasionally put them to bed. The parents told me the younger one was afraid of the dark and would probably ask me to lay in bed with him until he fell asleep. I put the six year old in her room and lay down next to the little boy and about a half hour later he'd just fallen asleep and I was ready to sneak out of the room when I heard grunting and rapid flopping noises from the other kid's room. 
it sounded like she was having a seizure. I rushed over to find she was flinging her arms on the bed like a rag doll. She looked possessed. Apparently she did this almost every night because she didn't want to go to bed. Her parents didn't warn me about this before and it was terrifying. Thanks for listening so far guys. Now this last one obviously is a bit of a bonus one and I found it and thought you just had to hear it. So here it is. Okay, in the early 1990s, I worked for a volunteer-based security group. We didn't have radio licenses for real walkie-talkies yet, so we had a set of headphones that worked off some common household frequencies. These frequencies were used for children's walkie-talkies, cheap cordless phones, drive-through speakers and baby monitors and such. During an outdoor distance test, I picked up some lady's cordless phone where she was talking about gross medical stuff but she couldn't hear us to get her to stop. So whilst testing a battery replacement, I picked up a two-way baby monitor in a nearby apartment. There was a baby fussing and the sound of a woman doing dishes. I'll be right there, hon, the woman said. On a whim, I pushed the talk button on my headset and said in a loud demonic voice, Feed me. Then I heard the shattering of dishes. That was hilarious when I was 21. But now, I kind of feel a little bad. Sorry, lady stranger. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I hope you all enjoyed that light-hearted ending to the video today. I found it so perfect I just had to share it. And we can all probably agree that you may never look at a baby monitor in the same way again. This is carrying on from the theme of children being creepy. So if you haven't seen the last video, be sure to go check it out with those helpful links on screen now. Go on. If you have an experience you want to share, be sure to send it to my email which can be found in the description below. I can't wait to feature your experiences. Just lastly guys, I can't believe we've nearly hit 500 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, now's the time. But just thank you to each and every one of you for watching and liking this. Your support really means the world to me. And something so small as a like or comment really makes a difference. So thank you guys. You're all awesome and I hope you have a good night wherever you are. But until then, I'll catch you in the next one.